if you want to become an artist in 2023 and you're not heavily considering YouTube as a part of your strategy, I think you're probably making a huge mistake. Three years ago, I never would have thought about making videos. I was getting my work into art galleries and coffee shops and trying to grow my Instagram. I just didn't think that video making was for me. But now, <laughs> three years later, I fervently believe with everything in my heart that the next Van Goghs and the next Steven Spielbergs, the best creatives of our generation, will get their start on YouTube. And I think YouTube is, in a way, the future of art and filmmaking. I know, big statement. <laughs> big, big statement. But I have three main reasons for feeling like this, and I hope at the end of this video to have fully convinced you of YouTube's ability to just, like, change the world, basically, and really your ability to change the world. But let's get into my three reasons. My first reason for thinking that YouTube will be the future of art and filmmaking is that YouTube is at its core an evergreen platform. Forget throwing your artwork and the short videos that you make, etc., into the endless void that is Instagram and TikTok. Those platforms basically chronically have a short lifespan by, by their very nature. On YouTube, videos have an insanely long lifespan unless you are talking about the news or something trendy your videos can and will continue to be relevant and watchable for years and potentially decades down the line this means that every video you make on youtube is somewhat or essentially really like an asset in an investment portfolio you make it once and you put it out into the world and it has limitless potential. It can make you an infinite amount of money years on the line. It can really gain like an infinite amount of views. It's, it's limit does not exist. <laughs> the limit does not exist. You make it, it's out there. It will continue generating money for you and support you while you go out and make something new. That's crazy. What this means is that your ticket to success is consistency and creative improvement. You want to consistently improve with every single upload, right? You want to plan, shoot, upload, repeat until you really nail in a format that works best for you. In this way, I feel like YouTube is more like a democratized Hollywood than a, like, a, like a platform that should be lumped together with Instagram. It just feels like something totally different. Every video is a fresh opportunity for you to share your journey as an artist, to make something meaningful, to iterate and improve on the one that came before it. In this way, it's very much a mirror of the creative process. With every painting, with every new animation, you want to improve on the one that came before, right? You want to get better and better and better at communicating, at telling a story, at rendering things effectively, whatever you're goals are as an artist, but YouTube introduces a very important additional like tenant or additional characteristic to the creative process, which is an inherent sense of accountability. YouTube rewards you for being consistent in at least some way. You want your videos to be like high quality, but also you want them to be like you want them to exist. <laughs> you want there to be enough videos that you can actually succeed. It took me two years and over a hundred videos really found my footing on the platform and I feel like I'm still, I'm still getting there. But this built-in accountability method will push you really to be the best artist you can possibly be if you stay true to yourself. And while you're posting your art and your story on this platform and improving at two wildly different skill sets, you're also doing something else that's really important, which is building a personal connection with an audience. The personal connection of long form video is really unparalleled. Long form content gives you room for nuance, for character development, for plot, true storytelling at its finest. You can share the journey, both in terms of the macro overall arc of your entire channel, going from a newbie to a professional artist, to the micro level of individual paintings, showing your audience the entire process from ideation to planning to painting to varnishing. You're sharing really the journey instead of just the destination. But let's talk about an example here. Chef RPG is an amazing channel on YouTube. This guy is building a video game. He's an architecture student and he's making a video game that's about like, I think Stardew Valley, but like you're a chef and you run a restaurant, okay? But it's, 
it's more than that. He's not just showing you the game. He's building it right in front of you. He's sharing that journey. He's an architecture student, and he's talking about the inspiration he's pulling from his buildings, tying in the history of architecture and game development and storytelling and all of these disparate components that come together to make something beautiful. That personal connection, that trust and rapport between you and your audience it is very difficult for people to trust you and care about you, be invested in the art that you're making within three minutes on TikTok. But with long-term exposure on a platform like YouTube, that trust, that rapport, that one-to-one -one connection with your audience, that will be far more effective at generating sales of your artwork than really anything else, but especially effective compared to syncing up a time-lapse to a trending audio. Think about the artists that you follow you care about them and the stories they tell and the art they share. You're not just buying their art because it's pretty or compelling, but because it's them that made it. Would you feel the same way about AI-generated art? Would that, would that resonate with you in like even a remotely similar way? I don't, I don't think so. I think those artists are really irreplaceable for you because of that connection that you have with them. YouTube is one of the best platforms for artists because you are making art about your art. Inception, basically. Um, layers and layers of complexity. And I think that art within art concept, the relationship that's possible between fine art, visual art, or even digital art and film is really something that hasn't been explored to its full potential yet, but it has so much power because of that evergreen concept on YouTube and the personal connection that you build up over time with your audience. People always talk about whether it's too late to start a channel as if the platform is really oversaturated and you can't grow anymore. I think creators like myself, Ashley King and Valerie Lynn have disproven that over the past couple of years. And I think there is always a shortage of high quality, innovative, quality content that tells a story that makes you feel something. I think there will always be a shortage of that. But the platform isn't perfect. Lots of creators like Emma Chamberlain and Colin and Samir, high profile creators, have been talking about how YouTube and maybe even like culture as a whole feels kind of stale. Like there aren't enough original stories being told. Everything is a remix, but like to the extreme. And this is true because when we do find original stories, when something new and innovative happens, we latch onto it, right? Like, I want you to compare Morbius, the movie, okay, to everything, everywhere, all at once. They don't even feel like the same kind of thing. Morbius... I don't like it, I don't want it, I don't want it anywhere near me. Everything everywhere all at once feels like a revelation. When I walked into that theater, I felt like my life was changed, like the world had shifted under my feet when I hadn't been looking, like there was something new that happened and I just witnessed like a really great movie. <laughs> Like a really amazing movie. And that's what I'd push you to make in a world where you have a million and one Morbiuses, be in everything, everywhere, all at once. If you can, as a creator, as an artist, as a human being, period, try to be something different, something special. It doesn't have to be crazy and innovative and, you know, like a Mr. Beast type of thing, but sometimes the most radical, life-changing, fresh feeling thing that you can do is to be honest and vulnerable with people and to share your story in an authentic, interesting, creative way. Art YouTube and YouTube in general feels a little bit stale. Like we're filming studio vlogs over and over again as a repository for footage instead of an opportunity to tell a really interesting story. But what does the best possible painting process video look like? What would an art vlog look like if it could win at the Sundance Festival? <laughs> That's an extreme example, but I hope you get my meaning here. There's an opportunity for us to use this platform to reinforce the meaning of our art. How could you film a painting process video that not only reinforces the meaning of the painting that you're creating, but the philosophy of you as an artist that really embodies the process of the creation of that work of art, how it felt for you, the artist, to be in the middle of that experience, 
to pick every single camera angle and narrative element with such purpose. What would that look like? I am so excited to find out. I wish there are more artists out there pushing the envelope of what's possible on art YouTube and raising the quality standard, creating art vlogs like no one's ever seen before. And I really hope that there are creators out there that can do that. Taking that beloved format of the painting process and the studio vlog and making it feel fresh and new again, because right now it feels stale. It feels overused. It feels like there are so many creators out there that are essentially identical. And I really wish more people would have the confidence to make something truly their own. And I'll be honest. If you think that making videos is a chore and you hate the idea of posting on YouTube, don't. There are so many other ways to make a living as an artist. But what I'm trying to say is more so that there is really unexplored territory in the intersection of art and film and YouTube and how incredible and lucky we are to be alive at a time when making our dreams, our livelihoods is a realistic option, a thing that we can do, how lucky we are to live in the era of the democratized Hollywood and the burgeoning creator middle class. And in a maybe not so far off future where there's an endless sea of AI generated art and anyone can write a three sentence prompt and make something, I think truly innovative long form video content, content that builds a connection between artist and audience that truly puts the labor behind creating something at the forefront of falling and falling and trying again and picking yourself back up and then finally succeeding and the finished product feeling like the breath of fresh air and oh my god you've made something new and it's not perfect but it's yours i think that will have way more impact because we'll have seen all of those previous field attempts will have been right there with you as you hit rock bottom and pick yourself back up again and we'll have seen the entire journey to get you where you are right now and the finished product and every single paintbrush and the color mixing and all of that amazing stuff that led you to this moment and i think that's so much more impactful i think that is irreplaceable. It, it can be automated. That human connection is something so, so valuable. So no matter what happens, I plan on making art videos for probably the rest of my entire life. I believe in this format. And if YouTube dies, I'm sure there'll be another place for me to post videos like this. So for as long as there are people that want to watch, there are videos that I will make for you. There is no other platform, frankly, that I'd rather be on right now. And I also think that it's high time that we try and push the envelope of what's possible, that we try and make art YouTube feel fresh and new again and something really special. So I did the most stereotypical YouTuber thing that I could do, and I started a vlog channel. Don't worry, don't worry, I will still be posting here. I pinky pinky promise. but. I wanna try making art videos that feel more like movies, art videos that feel like short films, that have that storytelling narrative component. And I really wanna push the envelope of what's possible. I don't think I'm like the perfect person to do this. I don't think I'm like eminently talented, but I do believe in the process of planning, shooting, uploading, and doing it all over again. <laughs> pressing publish and seeing what happens. And I believe in that process of iterative improvement. And that's what I wanna try. I wanna see if I can make the kind of art vlogs that I wanna see in the world, the kind of art vlogs that the world's never seen before. And if you wanna follow along in that journey, subscribe right over wherever I end up putting it and I will see you in the next one. Don't worry, I won't be leaving this channel. It's just uh, a new step in my quest for world domination. <laughs>